Would you consider yourself a, a little bit of a bad boy? No, I am an extremely good boy. I have the certification to prove it. I don't have my license on me, but... Your good boy certification? Yeah. Sure. Being a bad boy can sometimes be fun. I think you can get away with some things sometimes. The best way to do it is if you are the perfect mix of like a little bit of a bad boy, but then also you really know the rules. If you know the rules really well, then you can figure out where to strategically be a bad boy and it can work to your benefit. A great example of this philosophy mm -hmm. is the 1976 NBA Finals. With Celtics and... And the Suns. Suns. Right, yes. And one of our viewers, Cold Snap on YouTube, reminded us the game five of that series, which was incredible for a lot of reasons, has a great weird rule in it that I think is perfect for this philosophy. Okay, I feel like I know nothing about that game or that series. You're gonna love it because it's truly nuts. It contains what I have since learned is widely considered like one of the best finals games in history. So the Suns are up one point with four seconds left to go. So the Celtics get the ball back and John Havlicek makes this great 15-foot bank shot mm -hmm. to put the Celtics up one. And the Suns get the ball back with one second left on the clock. Mm -hmm. So they take a timeout. But the thing is, they don't have any timeouts left. That means the Celtics get a free throw because that's a technical foul. I've never thought about this before. Yes. So in 1976, the rules almost explicitly stated, if you call a timeout and you don't have any timeouts left, you do still get the, the timeout. So it's just like, it's like a luxury tax. It's like if you want more timeouts, it's gonna cost you one point per timeout. Exactly. Which in that scenario that you're describing is totally worth it. Yeah, You'll for give them sure. A point. You'd probably yeah. give them two points if you could right. get a timeout. And you get to advance the ball. Exactly, which is what they did. That is an unbelievable loophole. Yeah, it's crazy. And this is in the final? I had this never heard of game, this before. This is in game five of the 1976 NBA right. Finals. Yeah. And so, probably didn't matter, right? Like, Well, it did kind of. So we are in double overtime right now, yeah. and the Suns then do hit a two-point shot. And send it. And send it into a triple overtime. They lose the game eventually. Uh, yeah. The Celtics did win that game. I feel like game. If, if the Suns had won that game, because obviously the Celtics won the series. Right. If the Suns had won that game, that would be one of the biggest stories in NBA history. It would be crazy. I have never heard of that before today. That's yeah. crazy. And it could have actually been even crazier because the Celtics did a very similar thing in the first overtime. Uh -huh. And the referee, whose name was uh, Richie Powers, just kind of ignored it. Man. By the way, Richie Powers. Yeah. Kind of a weird move not going with Dick Powers. When your name is Richard Powers, he could have been called Dick Powers. It could, he could be Dick Powers. It's, it, it's impossible to know if behind the scenes maybe he's going by Dick Powers. Just seems like a waste of an opportunity. <laughs> uh, he was uh, later attacked in this very game because what happened was when the, the Celtics made that basket to go up by one point, the clock showed zero time left. So everyone went nuts in the garden because they thought the Celtics just won the game and start pouring onto the court. Yeah, this is that's an era where you could just do that. You, you could just, just do that on the court. And the Celtics started heading back to the locker room, like people are freaking out. And then you can see in the footage this guy, Richie Powers, the ref, is being attacked by a fan <laughs> and is like actually dragged down to the court. They, and this is before this is the before Suns got to, the Suns oh get the ball God. back and all of what I just told you. So not only are they dealing with this, but they have just moments ago had to get like 200 people off of the court and back into the stands to continue playing the final second of this game, which is chock full of just Suns chicanery, basically. Oh my God. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Him hitting the shot makes it a big deal. But if, man, if they had gone on to win the game... Is this rule still a thing? I guess that's so, my no. main question. They have since changed the rule and basically said, if you take a timeout okay. and you don't have any timeouts left, the other team does get a free throw, it's a technical foul, but then they also get the ball back. Okay, so you that do completely, not get, so solves, completely that. solves the has, issue. Because I was almost thinking like, because I'd never heard of that rule before, I was almost thinking like, if the Celtics hadn't won that game, they would have known to close the rule, but right. they figured it out. They anyway. definitely did. That's they too definitely bad. did, yeah. That, so that just got me thinking about like, oh, if you have the right amount of book smarts and then swagger to break the rules, you can totally take advantage of it. I mean, that's weird rules, better. baby. That's what the show is all about, man. <laughs>
Thanks for watching. That is a story that we pulled from the comments. So if you have an idea for a Weird Rules episode, go ahead and leave it there and maybe we'll do it in the future. You can watch more SB Nation videos here and don't forget to like and subscribe.